What's good sports gamers? It's pitching the MOB to show 21 at Adventure for you. Well, with this video, I'm gonna go over some things you may not have noticed you were doing or things you can start doing now to help improve your pitching performances in MOB to show 21. So, all right, let's get it. Now, the first tip I wanna go over with you, especially if you're new to the series, is you want to find the pitching interface you're most comfortable with as fast as possible. We have the options of meter, pulse, analog, classic, and new to MOB to show 21, pinpoint pitching. Each having specific pros and cons that can appeal to many gamers. Are you in favor of your pitching interface being 100% user control and trust your right stick skills? Analog may be for you. With pinpoint pitching, adding a higher degree of difficulty with the best accuracy for your pitches if you master it. Classic relies most on ratings, but you're simply pressing the pitch button. Pulse is the easiest while still adding some kind of user input, while the default meter, while needing obvious user input, can have you wondering about pitch location as well. So head into practice mode and see what interface you're most comfortable using, and if you want a more detailed explanation on each, click on the link above. Now something you want to avoid as much as possible, mostly early in the game, is getting beat by your opponent's 8-hole hitter if he has decent numbers especially when the pitcher is due up right behind him. If there are two outs and the eight hitter is coming up, you want to get as close as you can to intentionally walking him without doing so. So basically give him nothing good to hit. Work the corners, work away, and or hope he chases anything out of the zone. A little riskier is if there is somebody on second and first base is open with two outs. You can execute the same strategy and watch your opponent fight against their instinct to pinch it in the third inning to try and take advantage of the opportunity. But just in general, play the odds. Now as a pitcher, by holding the right trigger, you can view your pitch history to the current batter at the plate. So if they hit a home run or a double in the gap last at bat, you can find out here what pitch it was exactly and where to. So you can avoid the same mistake again. And trust if the hitter is actually using the right trigger with good intentions. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Your opponent will be well aware of what you threw last time if he didn't already. Now speaking of your opponent, when playing online, make note of your opponent's tendencies and adjust accordingly. You never want to play everybody the same, you know? You ever play a guy that will not swing at anything out of the zone? Don't continue to force the issue, now you should start focusing on disrupting his timing as he's probably sitting fastball and getting movement on pitches so they don't land square on his back. Now, if you play everybody's favorite type of player who swings at any and everything in his zip code, the last thing you want to do is give them something to hit if you don't have to, right? Because they're basically saying, I will get myself out. Just let me. So force them to adjust or let them ruin themselves. Even the rare unicorn who takes the first pitch. Either they already plan to do that before you even threw a pitch or they picked up on the tendency of yours. Even how they react to certain pitches and locations can tell you what to do and not to do. If they pull an off speed or breaking ball foul, the worst thing you want to do is throw a fastball up and then next because they're sitting on it. Don't fall into their trap. Now going off of my last point, it's hard enough to try avoiding throwing a moonshot to Ken Griffey, but you don't want to make it any easier on them by having them know what you're about to throw next. So you want to be aware if you have any patterns to exploit as it's fairly easy to fall into the motions of doing certain things every time a certain batter or lefty or righty come up. Are you opening each right-handed hitter with a slider down and away, falling out of the zone? Are you throwing lefties a changeup down for a ball every time on two strikes? Your opponent, even if they swing at it the first two times, will start to pick them on stuff like this. And before you know it, you're putting yourself behind the count every time because they're not swinging at your bullcrap. Even popular pitch sequences everybody uses like fastball for a strike, then curve out the zone, sometimes won't be as effective because the hitter knows what to look for. You want to stay away from things like those the moment it seems like the hitter is starting to wise on. If you bang a fastball and then slider, if they're not swinging on that changeup in the dirt on 0-2, maybe it's time to try another pitch out before you mess up and leave one in the zone. Knowing these tendencies and avoiding them can shift at-bats back in your favor and keep hitters off balance. Now when you're in the middle of getting slumped by your opponent and or your control is not existent, we have a tendency to throw the next pitch as fast as possible as if that erases the 500 foot shot we just gave up. But don't forget the power of the mound visit to calm your pitcher down to bump his confidence back up. 
Another great use of the mound visit is using it before you bring in a reliever, especially if you know you didn't give them enough time to warm up. Now the handiness of the batter plays a role in pitch selection as hitting from the left to right will give each hitter built-in advantages and disadvantages immediately, as well as the gamer. Lefty versus lefty or righty versus righty, you want a steady diet of sliders, cutters running away, curveballs falling out of the zone, and fastballs and sinkers inside breaking many bats. While lefty versus right-handed bat and righty versus left-handed batters makes it a lot easier to load up and hit a lot of these breaking pitches and lay off the obvious balls more. So stuff like change-ups join the party as an effective pitch to get opposite-handed hitters out. If like I mentioned earlier, it's enough of a speed difference off that fastball to get the desired swing and misses. Now, if your pitcher possesses a sinker or a cutter or both, you have a major advantage against your opponent if they possess neither. Sinkers up and in, lefty versus lefty and righty versus righty matchups are extremely effective pitches because of the late movement on the sinker to get batters a swing and miss especially when paired with an equally fast fastball. And cutters down into the corner might as well be an instant roll over pitch because of how hard it is for the batter to handle it. Now we all know certain pitchers have a nice set of pitches and others have straight boo-boo, so you already know it will be extremely hard to get busy with these type of guys on a consistent basis without even looking at their ratings. So it's important if your pitcher's arsenal features a good fastball and at least one pitch that breaks sideways and another that breaks down with a nice speed difference or else it will be a pretty long day. Any pitcher you use against online opponents that doesn't have a horrendous pitch arsenal, you wanna focus on two ratings, the pitcher's hits per nine and K per nine ratings. These two stats on the card determine how big your opponent's PCI is. The bigger the PCI, obviously, the more likely they are to get a hit on you. Creating a smaller PCI for your opponent will make it tougher to square up the ball. And lastly, to make yourself that much harder to hit, you're going to want to try to start blending your pitches together as much as possible, so you're not tipping off the batter to what pitch is being thrown any earlier than you need to. And then MLB is called pitch tunneling. The ground throws two pitches that start down the middle, then once the hitter goes, okay, I'm going to hit it, one pitch goes one way and the other goes another way. That's why he has struck out 595 batters in five games or whatever. The best pitchers at MLB are masters of this, and you should be aware of this also if you weren't. Or hey, you may have been doing it all along and never knew the name of it. Again, the basic gist of pitch tunneling is throwing two different pitches that appear to be going in the same spot as long as possible until they make their break in their specific direction. And if you do it right, the hitter almost has no clue what pitch it is before he hits the swing button or analog stick. And I mean, you don't have much time to think about this anyway, so you see how hard it is. Fastballs and changeups are the easiest pitches to combine and make look the same because they look almost identical until they're not. And if the changeup has a nice speed difference from the fastball and if it has movement on it, good night. You can really get your opponent swinging early expecting a fastball or late because although it looks like a fastball, you can't really rule out the changeup. A combo like a fastball middle end and a slider going away from a righty that we all swing on is another good combo. Fastballs up and in followed by a sinker in that same location is an extremely popular one also that causes a lot of swing and misses or weak contact on the ball. So all right, sports gamers, hope you enjoyed the video. And if you like the content we provide, make sure to subscribe to Sports Gamers Online for more MLB The Show content. And once you're with us, hit that bell icon at the bottom so you don't miss anything we put out. All right, people, I'm Chris. Thank you all for watching and be good, y'all.